Hi and welcome, my name is Lawrence Baker and this video is going to be about unsharp mask, which is a method of sharpening. Where does that name come from? Well, in the early days of photography, they used to duplicate an image, blur it, invert it, turn it into a grayscale mask, put it on top, and all that will be showing from the top image is these luminous borders over the edges of the original document, and that would give the impression of sharpness. Well, unsharp mask works like that. Right click here, convert to smart object, because you cannot have a smart filter without first having a smart object. Filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Up to 500 for amount, a radius around 10 will do. Now you can see that border. Command or control key kept press, you can zoom in like so. Alter option, key kept press, you can come back out. There's that border, and that's all sharpening is. It's taking an edge that's already there and making it wider and upping the contrast, so to speak. So a mount is like a contrast dial. You're making the darks darker, brights brighter, so to speak. Radius is how far do you want to extend into neighboring pixels with this border. So if I take it down to 0.1, there'll be no sharpening taking place. So as I bring the radius up, it's, it's encroaching the luminance border into neighboring pixels. There has to be an edge there in the first place for this to work. Threshold works like this. It runs from zero to 255. At, let's say it's 16. What will happen is there'll be no sharpening taking place between neighboring pixels until there's a difference of at least 16 levels of luminance. So this is very good at protecting areas of smooth color, etc., like skies. So if you don't want the luminance noise sharpened in the sky, you play with the threshold slider. So it is a very good tool on Sharp Mask, but I think for getting rid of noise or protecting smooth areas, it's not as good as Smart Sharpen. Smart Sharpen has a slider for reduced noise. Unsharp Mask has been around since the very early days of Photoshop. It was the only sharpening tool that had controls. Let's uh, go to a, a normal photograph. Let's cancel on this. Before I go there, actually, here's an image that's pure black and white. Command zero to fit on screen. Sharpen unsharp mask, no matter what I do, I'm not going to do anything to that because basically it's a perfect luminance border already. Cancel. Let's go to a photograph here. I took it with my, I think it was my Leica X1, 12 megapixels. It's 4,200 pixels by roughly 2,400 pixels. Not a considerably high resolution image because obviously cameras now are turning out 7,000 by 5,000 or more, decent cameras that is. And some phones have got huge amounts of pixels as well. That doesn't mean the quality of the pixels are that good compared to an SLR. Obviously, the bigger the sensor, the more light you can gather as well and the more detail it can have. So this was a 10-bit camera. My Sony at the moment, Alpha 7R2 is 14-bit. It's not a bad image, this quite noisy in the sky it's just a little bit too soft and I need to sharpen it up so it's a background layer you never work on a background layer so command or control J to duplicate right click convert to smart object you can't have a smart filter without first having a smart object you can see the little thumbnail there I might as well turn that off filter sharpen unsharp mask now you've got the box there I'll explain the blocks in more detail now if you click and press down, that's the before, let go, that's the after. You can move it to certain areas. I'm going to move it to there so I can see the sky, and obviously you can zoom in. Now, if you're sharpening, you should be at least at 100% view, that is. I, when I do things like this, I often go to 400 so I can really see that noise and see the sharpening. 100% is absolute minimum view. I don't necessarily have to be at 100% in the image itself. I just have to be when I'm looking here. So... I'm looking at that thinking 200 is far too much. I normally go 100, 3, and 3. Now, that's for my Sony Alpha 7 R2. It's pushing this image too far. The lower the resolution of the image, the less you can play around with it. You're breaking up things. So that's why having a lot of pixels and obviously a lot of bit depth in a camera so you've got more detail, you can play around with sharpening a lot more. Here, you're going to break up the image a lot more because it's quite a low-resolution image. 
that's far too much. Let's bring the threshold up and see if we can get rid of that noise in the sky. And around 10, I reckon it will start getting rid of it. Yes, it has. If you can't see this going on, I'm going to zoom in now. Command or Control, key kept pressed. I'm going to zoom in around there till I reach the equivalent of 400%. So you can see what's going on. So threshold down, lots of noise. Threshold up to about 16. I might be able to get away with 10. I don't want to turn off the sharpening completely. Slightly still crunchy. I might bring the radius down to about 2.2 and the amount around 80, maybe even lower 70. You can untick preview before, after. Probably a little bit more on the amount, actually. Before, after. I think that's sharp enough. OK. And Command or Control Zero to fit on the screen. Now... I should be at 100% view because I'm at 74% now. So Command or Control 1 is 100% view. So you're seeing it as you should see it. I think that's absolutely fine. Now, the next big step is this. Double click on this symbol here when you've got this smart filter. This is why you should work with a smart object when you're doing this type of sharpening. And change the blend mode to luminosity. Because I can almost guarantee there'll be some color artifacting in this image. You might not be able to see it at 100% view, but there is. It's something you always must do, turn the mode to luminosity. So it's only working on luminance, because that's what sharpening is all about. So it's not shifting any colors. Because sharpening will take place on red, green, and blue, and sharpen up each channel. So it's going to cause a bit of color artifacting. So I would say, for me, that's job done. If I was going to print, I would always over-sharpen. How much you over-sharpen by, I would say roughly by half again. But it is trial and error until you get that print back from the bureau or from your printer. Then you can only say safely that you've done the sharpening properly. So it's a, it's a bit trial and error. But roughly half of the amount again, just to make sure you understand that, I would bring up, if I was on 100 here... I would bring it up to 150. I wouldn't touch the radius or threshold. So let's leave it on 100 and put that onto 3 to make life easier and put that back to 3. Because what I'm going to do is duplicate this layer and go Command and Control J. I'm going to come to the top image, double click on Unsharp Mask, bring the amount up to 200, go OK, come to the blending options here, double click, and change the opacity to 50. So I'm going to call that top one there, 200 AMT and 50 opacity. The bottom one, 100 AMT for amount and 100 OPACT. Right, let's get rid of those filter masks. Right click, delete filter mask, right click, delete filter mask. 200 amount, 50% opacity, 100 amount, 100 opacity. It is often best to go for a higher amount and lower opacity, and I'll show you why now. So let's come to this top one here, and let's add a levels adjustment layer. Alt or Option key kept pressed. If I click down on the highlight slider, I'm going to see all the clipping in the image. So where it's white, it's clipping in all three channels, and if you see colors like red, green, or blue, it's clipping in those channels. So I've got some clipping. But if I put the other image on, turn that one off, Alter Option key kept pressed, look how much clipping I've got with the 100% amount and 100% opacity. I've got so much more than the one that's 200 amount and 50 opacity. Although they're replicating each other in terms of sharpening, the one that has the higher amount and the lower opacity actually doesn't clip as many colors. Now, quite why this is, I don't know. And I'll show you in the shadows whilst I'm here as well. Ultra Option key kept press, click on the shadows. Quite a bit on that bottom image. Turn the top one on. A lot less in the top image. Just to recap, sharpening is about luminance. Amount is the contrast dial. Radius is how far do you want to encroach into neighboring pixels. Threshold is how many levels of difference in luminance you want before the sharpening takes place. Also, you're better off upping the amount and lowering the opacity. And I actually think on this image, the top one here, I'd get rid of that le levels layer, though it won't make any difference because I haven't moved any sliders, but let's get rid of it. 
I would probably go for on this image 30% opacity. And that for me is a pretty good sharpen. Again, make sure that you use the blend mode on the blend mode options here of luminosity, up the amount and lower the opacity. And play around with opacity until you get the effect that you want. And that's the best way of doing it. Always over sharpen for print as well. I hope you got something from this. Uh, even if you don't use Unsharp Mask, you've understood sharpening works on luminance. And that's it, really. All the sharpening tools work the same. Quickly, filter and sharpen. Sh shape reduction, well, I've used that occasionally. Sharpen, sharpen edges and sharpen more are pretty crude and pretty useless. So the only tools with ellipsis after them are Smart Sharpen and Unsharp Mask. And they're the ones that give you the control, basically. That's it, guys. Thank you very much.